Hey everybody, welcome back to the video today. So if you're anything like me and you still use this old operating system in the year 2023, you probably like to play games. So as we know, the main reason why a lot of people don't run older operating systems is because there has been this uh, n uh, narrative that's going on that games do not run on older operating systems. And that might be true for a good amount. There is actually a good amount of games you, you can get up and running on Windows 7 and 8.1 in the year 2023. So how is this possible exactly? So if you're into technology at all, you probably know what, what Proton is by this point. It is basically Wine with, with things like with, with DirectX 2 Vulkan and V3 VDK. So what are these things exactly? So v Vulkan is, is its own API that you would use for other things. So Vulkan is basically like DirectX, but it's not as popular. So there has been this thing called Proton for the last five years that translates DirectX to Vulkan. So uh, DirectX to Vulkan has been a thing for like eight years, but it has just now started to take off within the last three to four years. And that is with Proton. So all these things are each individual things. People think Proton is just one compatibility layer. It is not. It is comprised of many things. It's comprised of many things like Wine, DXVK, and VKD3D. So how exactly can you get these up and running on Windows 7 and 8.1? Well, it is pretty easy. So before I go any further, I will say this is kind of hit or miss. You will get some games up and running, but I would probably say you would probably have a 50% fail rate. Because people just think, oh, it should just be plug and play. If there's a API that the game can run, it can run. Well, that might be true for some games. There's a good amount of games that just do not run. So, for example here, I have Elden Ring, which can run on, on uh, Windows 7. There has been videos of it done and shown before, but I, for the life of me, I can just not get it up and running. Every time I try to run Elden Ring, it just gives me this error. So, uh, some games just do not work. So, for example, High on Life. This game came out in late 2022. If I try to run this game, though, as we can see, I've been playing through it, and it's gonna take a, a it's gonna take a minute to launch because you know that's just how Vulcan is sometimes. So as we can see, the game is up and running, perfectly fine. So this game is not natively supported. This game uses DirectX 12, but as you can see right here, it is fully running. So how exactly do you do this? So it's pretty easy. All you have to do is just download DXVK, and you just have to use this version. So there are a lot of versions you can download, so it's not necessarily that hard. So you just want to come here, DXVK Async, and then you just want to head to here, and these are the files you'll have. So this is for DirectX 9, this is for DirectX 10, this is for DirectX 11, or no, that's I'm retarded. This is for DirectX 9, this is for DirectX 10, DirectX 10, again, that's for DirectX 10.1. This is for DirectX 10, I believe. It's like a other extension for DirectX 10, and this is for, your, these two are for DirectX 11. So you might be wondering, what is for DirectX 12? Well, that's where we have V, that's where we have VKD3D. So DirectX to Vulkan does not support 12 just yet. It is still in development, so that is why you have to use something called VKD3D. So this is how you get DirectX 12 games up and running on Linux via Proton, is with this. So this is how you can get a good amount of, I would not say a good amount, because this stuff, it works, but as I said before in the, vi or in the beginning of this video, it is really, am I recording on me? Okay, yeah, I'm recording. I thought I wasn't for a second. My PC was running too good for a second there, because, you know, you guys probably know, if you use anything with Aeroglass, OBS can sometimes just spaz out, so just checking that. So as you can see right here, this allows some DirectX 12 APIs to run. I will say some because some games just flat out do not work. And that is because, well, there's more that there's more that goes into it than just your API. For example, if I try to launch, uh, where is it? If I, I've been trying to get, for the past two weeks, I've been trying to get the, the new 
Spider-Man game up and running. Sp Spider-Man Miles Morales is not necessarily new, but it's a relatively new game. My thing's all messed I was trying to crack 2K, so this thing is like all the way messed up. Computer, here, crack games. Yes, I pirate my games. Boo-hoo, go cry. Spider-Man Miles Morales. So, when I try to run the game, it just gives me this error. So, there is a API it can use, but it's just giving me a kernel 32 error, and that is because the kernel does not have a certain patch to run this game. So there is this piece of software out here that I'm going to make another video about. It's called Vexket. It's basically kind of, it's like the off-brand Windows Vista egg extended kernel. It can work, but most of the time it just won't. And that is because it's just not that good. I mean, there's not really a lot here for a Windows 7 egg extended kernel. I'm pretty sure the person who made the Windows uh, Vista extended kernel Win32. I'm pretty sure he has plans to make one for Windows 7. That's going to take a while. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be like a a rebranded Vexkex. So if I enable Vexkex for this program, you can see here that it's just giving me a DirectX 12 error. So there are ways to force games to run on DirectX 11. And that's how I get some games up and running. So a lot of people don't know, but you can get a lot of games. Like, this doesn't even, just like Vulkan. Like, this doesn't even just apply for Vulkan. When you have some games that say DirectX 11, but say the minimum requirement is Windows 10, it's just pure BS. They just don't want to say Windows 10. So, for example, that can easily come into this game. It's been really good. Like, I really have enjoyed this game. It's come out, It came out like one month ago. It's called BattleBit Remastered. In the game requirements, it does not say it can run on 8.1 or 7, but it's DirectX 11, so it doesn't really have a choice. It's going to run. The only way the game would not run is 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 God. I'm I need to go to bed, bro. The only reason the game would not run is if the if the developers themselves made sure that you were running 10 or 11, and I don't think a lot of a lot of indie developers do that mainly because they just want more people playing the game. So. As we can see, if we try to run the game with DirectX 11, it's just going to give us the same error because this game cannot utilize DirectX 11 at all. So I do have an idea because with Apple's with Apple's new thing that allows you to run games, it also uses Crossfire, and there is a way to force DirectX 12 games to run on DirectX 11. So I don't know if this is even theoretically possible at all, but I will look into it. I want to see if it's possible to get Crossfire, of, like kind of like a fork of Crossfire, but like not necessarily Crossfire, because we don't need Wine, we don't need that stuff, we just need VK3D, VK, this is a tongue twister, dude, VK, Jesus Christ, man, I have to read it again, because I forgot how to say it, I always forget, VKD3D, all we need is that and DXVK, we do not need Wine, well, I mean, Wine is, this is too much explaining, but, but, as I was saying, I would like to see if that's possible, because that would probably open up almost every game possible to work on Windows 7. So what else could you use this for? So that's a very good question, and I have weird, I have very good real-world examples. So I am a huge Saints Row enjoyer. I've been playing Saints Row since I was like 8 years old. I love Saints Row 2. I mod the hell out of this game. It's just a very fun game in general. So, the game runs horrible on PC. I mean, even on a 5700 XT and a Ryzen 7 3700, no. 3700X, the game runs like complete dog shit. I mean, like, I get like 80 FPS and maxed out settings. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's playable. But, I mean, dude, it's a game that came out in like 2007, so it should run better. So, with DirectX to Vulkan, on the other hand, that fixes almost every single issue. I'm able to run the game at a solid 144 FPS, with, with DirectX to Vulkan. So the way I do this is, I'm not going to launch the game, because for whatever reason, every time I try to open the Saints Row 2 with OBS, my freaking graphics card drivers crash. So um, I don't want to do that, or else this video will uh, not happen. So if I head on over to where that game is stored, I'm pretty sure it's on this. Hard drive, common. Um, nope, it is not. I am retarded. See my berry, see maps, common. Here we go, Saints Row 2. We can see that I copied over the, where is it? Shaders, DirectX. Huh, where did it go? Where did the 
the well, I guess it just disappeared, I guess. Cash. Alright, well, I guess this just vanished. But, okay, so I'm pretty sure the reason that happened is because I had to verify the, the integrity of the game files, like, two hours ago. So I was having issues with it, so it probably just got rid of my DXVK config. So that's annoying. But the way this would work is you would just drag the files into it. So say, for example, if you're going to use a DirectX 9 game with DXVK async, you would just come over here, DXVK async, 64-bit, and you would just drag this file into it. Now, I'm pretty sure this game can use uh, DirectX 10, so it might just be this or these three. I'm 99% sure this game is a DirectX 9. I'm pretty sure it can use both, actually. I'm pretty sure this is like one of those games that's multi-compatible. But how can you use this for multiplayer games? So, this will not work for any multiplayer games, trust me. I have tried. I have tried with, with Siege GTA 5, which you can use, uh, you can use uh, DirectX with Vulkan for it, but GTA 5 will not run because there is this issue with Linux to where Wine will just not run under a lot of anti-cheats like EAC. It can run, but the, the, the developers have to enable it themselves, which I just find dumb because it is literally one click. All they have to do is 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 when they're within their anti-cheat, it's just allow Wine to run. Boom. That would make Proton work on all those games. Like, say, for example, we have Call of Duty M M M Modern Warfare 2. That game could run if Activision would get off their asses and just click one button. But no, it won't. I, I hope that changes, because I would like to play the game on my Steam Deck. Like, that would just be a nice game to play, but nope. I, I can't do that. So, why does this not work for online games? To be honest, but the uh, the only issue I can think of is that they do oper they do OS checks. So we do not have a good thing yet. As I said before, Vexkex is not that good. We do not have a good we do not have a good thing that can spoof the operating system easily yet. I say yet because there's so many people that are just tied to this OS that I guarantee you one will be made. So, online games, it can work if you're playing older games. Like, for example, if you're playing Grand Theft Auto 4, which Vulcan literally makes that game so much more playable. Like, I will not run that game without Vulcan. I don't have it installed right now because I just... I, I've already beaten that game, like, 85 times. So, I mean, there isn't really a point for me to play through it again. But I find that uh, with uh, older games, DirectX DXVK just works so much better. So, I'm going to wrap up this the video here, because there's not really a lot to talk about anymore. I already got the points out that I already uh, I wanted to get, and I'm going to take my happy ass to bed. i got to freaking sleep. Alright, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. If you guys have any comments or any questions, I will definitely answer them. And I hope to make more v videos about this on the future, because this is really intriguing to me that I would love the freedom to use my OS of choice for a time to come. Now, please, do not just leave comments like, why are you running Windows 7? Like, this is not needed for the video. This video is for educational purposes only. I would not recommend running Windows 7 in 2023. I do not use this OS for anything important. I just like to use this OS for gaming, because 10 and 11 just run horribly for gaming. Like, over time, the bloat just gets so bad. And I did just make a video on why I still use this OS in 2023. I use it for a lot of stuff, but, like, I will not log into anything that that is, like, banking. Now, I'm not scared that I'll just get instantly hacked. I just want to, you know, take that extra precaution. But, like, literally anything else can just run perfectly fine on this OS. Especially with DirectX to Vulkan. I really do feel like this OS has a bright future, even though it hasn't been supported in three and a half years. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys found this video good, and I'll see you guys in the next one.